But Air Gate is with us now, fresh on the heels of this uh, photo we just saw. I just saw it for the first time. Uh, Gary, first of all, congratulations to you and your ladies on advancing to the to the Women's Championship weekend in Towson. Uh, but how many times a year, I'm just curious, how many times a year do you see the photo of Air Gate? Sure. You know how there's those guys that show up out of nowhere and they ask you to sign like 10 things and they got them on boards and they got the numbers isolated. This year, there's been a resurgence of that. It's been super weird. I came through the security gate at the airport and there was two guys waiting for me. I'm like, how did you know I was getting off the flight? <laughs> How did you know? And they had all their stuff, and it was right there. I was like, and and every single game in the after every single game this year, there's been two or three guys. It's it's just been weird this year that that and it's always that picture, and it's all or or a jersey with the 22 on it. And there's can you sign this for me? And then it's like, can you sign 10 for me? Can you sign these balls? Can you sign? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, everybody's got to got to do what they got to do. So, but I'm always happy to sign. Hey, Gary, you've got an entrepreneurial spirit. We're in the uh, the world of blockchain and, and NFTs, man. Airgate is such an iconic image. Have you ever thought about you know putting that up in a blockchain? Or I'm not sure what the terminology is. You you could you could sell that for 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 a pretty penny. <laughs> Well, I, I, I did partner up with my brother, and we, we, we do have plans to utilize that as our elite brand down the road with Gate Lacrosse. So we're just not mm. there yet, but, you know, kind of like the, the Air Jordan side of, of Nike, it, we're, we're planning on doing something with the Air Gate. There we oh, go. That'd be awesome. Hey, hey uh, last weekend, we saw uh, Emma Ward kind of take control, right? Um, you know, you've had great scoring. You've also, and we've talked to you before, we know you've battled injuries. You've battled all sorts of different obstacles with this particular team. But to see Emma Ward go get six goals, you beat Florida by six, 17-11 to advance. What, what does that mean? Where does that rank for you in terms of just the development of this particular Orange team? You know, I, I thought, I think she got five of them in the second half. It was tied 5-5. Five, five. And to step up as a freshman, a true freshman, now a sophomore, just finished her freshman year in school. So she's, I guess, officially mm -hmm. a sophomore. Uh, and she was that day and she played like it. So I'm hoping that's what we get the rest of the way. She was, uh, you know, it's what you hope for these young players when they step up. You hope you can build the confidence in freshmen and and. You know, we've been able to do that with her, and, and she feels, you know, super confident. And she's very skilled and, and can put the ball in the back of the net. And, you know, she's done this a couple times for us this year, and, and we just need a couple more out of her. Gary, when you lose your best player to injury, it makes the journey so much harder. You've lost two of your best players to injury this season. What's allowed this team to still get to this stage despite that? You know, I, 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 we've talked about it a couple times with different people, but uh, I think there's a couple things. One is the fact that we brought back 10 of our 11 seniors. So we have five classes on the team right now, and we have 46, seven players. Um, and it makes it so that you have depth. And, and, you know, we recruited some of these freshmen to come in and start but then the seniors came back. So it's allowed us to have that depth. Um, and, and as long as those freshmen step up like you hope they would, you know, you're, you're right where you would have been, you know, without those seniors. But, uh, you know, this year it's just been the most talented uh, lacrosse year ever. Each team is so stacked. And, and with those mm -hmm. extra players, uh, it, it's, it's just been incredible lacrosse. And the skill level's been off the charts. But in a weird year where all these different kind of things have collided, if you will, um, it's still the sport where you're trying to, to find a way to, to win and to be successful. And here you are through all that back to a national championship weekend. Does that make this particular one more satisfying than some others, Gary? 
Well, you know, I think, you know, the first one was pretty unique to come in and take over the program. I think I had 18 mm -hmm. healthy players, 22 on the roster, four injured throughout the year. And, and you know, you come in, you take over a program, you say you're going to go to a Final Four and you do it the first year. You know, that, that was pretty special to do that. And, and to, you know, right. that set the tone for this program and, and to change the culture of expectations of, of not just being happy to go to a conference championship, but... You, we want to go to the Final Four. We want to win the national championship. And we haven't done that yet, but we got another shot this year. So super excited. Gary, you guys are having fun on the way, too. And one of my favorite parts of watching you guys play is after the goal, the shots of the sideline and the sideline <laughs> celebrations. Can you take us through what that's like from your vantage point to see the creativity that the girls have on the sideline? Uh, you know, they, we talk about energy and, and being a great teammate and all of that. And I just, you know, I'll walk down the end and I'll be caught sometimes walking through the middle of the celebration and be like, oh, my God, should I jump in or should I just let it be? And most, thank goodness, I just let it be because they're, they're doing their thing and they do a great job and I just stay out of the way. But that, that you know, they're... They're as valuable as, as any part of the team, any member that's on the field, off the field. We talk about it all the time. You know, everybody's got a role, and, and to see this energy from the mm -hmm. sideline, it just fires up the players on the field. So, you know, it's a great mm -hmm. team and a great team effort. Yeah, that's fun to watch, too. The, uh, the idea now of, uh, of Northwestern on Friday, um, you know, this is the national semifinal. How do, what's this week like for you? What do you, what do you know about them? Obviously you got plenty of tape, I'm guessing, but at the same time, how do you, how do you get ready for this event? Cause you know, to me, it's got the feel of like, if you don't get it done before Wednesday or Thursday, uh, you know, you, you probably got issues when you get there, right? Yeah, we, we probably got, we got our game plan pretty much in place and we started yesterday you know, what we're going to do offense, defense, and we started working on it, preparing rides, clears, all that stuff. So um, we play these guys every year except this year. Um, we played them last mm -hmm. year, and we went out there, and we actually uh, took it to them pretty good and, uh, and beat them in their home, uh, fa uh, home indoor facility. And so that's a, a little bit of a confidence builder, know that we match up pretty well against them. You know, both teams bringing back their players plus a couple. Um, so at least uh, it's not like we're a big underdog or anything. It's just a matter of who's going to step up, play well, and make big plays. Yeah. You've gone through the ACC gauntlet, and you've got BC and UNC at championship weekend from your conference with you. Is there anybody that you've played in your league amongst the heavy hitters that Northwestern resembles? Um, no, <laughs> not at all. They're very unique. <laughs> you know, they're, 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 they just, they shoot and they go to net They're They, they just go to goal. They're like, uh, you know, like a basketball team. It's not about possession, just about putting up as many shots as possible. And they lead the country in scoring mm -hmm. and, and they just seem to outscore people. And they were doing that last year as well when we played them. So they were averaging, 20 plus goals last year and we were able to hold them to 10. So we're hoping our defense can step up and, and, you know, be the only team that can really slow them down for an entire game. Well, I tell you what, we wish you a lot of luck. Looking forward to watching Friday afternoon at two 30 on, uh, on ESPNU. It's great to see Syracuse back on this stage. Congratulations on the, uh, on the win in the regionals and safe travels to Towson, Gary. I appreciate it guys. Thanks for having me on.